Hello there. This is the magnificent structure. The magnificent sheet code that is Ludon Town. This is how we should play. This is exactly how we should play. As a matter of fact. And yeah. Hope you are with me on the tactics. There is one more thing I need to do. Need to open up Google on my phone. Um, and I'm gonna type in as a Luton, as the manager of Luton Town. What is the easiest and best way to release stress? Search. Google says, you are the manager of Luton Town. You are truly fucked. There is no way back for you. Well, thank you for your honesty, Google. I appreciate it. And um, yeah, that was what I was afraid of. Um, so, yeah. Yikes. But anyway, <laughs> this is... <coughs> This is my intro to this episode number three. Um, thought I'd go and do a little bit of a, a cam intro just for shits and giggles. We are. Um, well, we did play, uh, play through the August games earlier. I haven't really done an episode in a week or so because I've been super fucking sick. I haven't had any voice to, to talk about. My voice is still not recovered fully, but it's fine. At least I can still talk now. Uh, couldn't really do that a few days ago, so here we are. So I've been kind of waiting to actually record this, and now I actually can. So I thought I'd put on a, a little bit of a show to start it off with for you. Mm. So we're going to get into... Um, well, we did leave off uh, like September 1st, I think it was. Uh, so now we're gonna go through um, what is it, September, October games. Andros Townsend arrived as well for us now. So every player that was set to sign for us have now signed for us. So, but we'll get into that when we get into the game, which we sh should be doing right now. So join me at the game. Hello and welcome to the game. I actually put my my cam on here as well. So you can actually see when I talk shit. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go through the games we have played here. Uh, we can actually go straight into that, uh, go straight into the schedule, because we did the August, we had a decent start out, we drew against Newcastle away, St. James's, and took a win, a televised, televised game uh, at home against Nottingham Forest, then we had a home draw against Crystal Palace, and then we advance in the EFL Cup second round against crew so now we're gonna get into to September and as I said the honeymoon is now over started here at Molyneux against Wolves had a pretty pretty rough start on this what should we have here I guess that's fine. Yeah, let's go with, with stats there. Uh, general info or basic info. Yeah, I'll probably we'll probably keep it as general info. So it's, a, it's a tough away game. I mean, Wolves isn't one of the best teams in the league obviously but a tough uh, tough game away they're on 
established uh, or mid table side i would say anyway uh, been a little bit up and down over seasons but yeah so uh, pretty solid solid team anyway and um, yeah they started uh, they started off uh, fucking us over pretty pretty good in the first half in 19 20 second minute they scored Pablo Sarabia scored both goals there which isn't great obviously kind of got into it in the second half uh, we played pretty uh, pretty defensively well not as defensively as we have, have done in some games where we played like three or no, five back and five defenders but like a four defenders and two defensive midfielders like a ball winning midfielder and a box to box midfielder now and then Barkley up at uh, AM well Cam I guess uh, Ogbena out there and Brown and Adebayo uh, nothing much to talk about with like the, the first 11 there we didn't really get much out of them Brown had a good game, Sambi had a good game Sambi Lokonga who is on loan from Arsenal by the way so yeah if I go into analysis here now let's keep that stats I mean we have stats here as well so it's not very very in depth but you know if we uh, expected goals they had 3.28 we had 1.32 so we're about that because late on we got some some momentum with us after after a few substitutions so in terms of offense i guess we took out barkley because he had a terrible game nakamba didn't have his best game at, at all either neither did adebayo or Agbane, but in terms of offense we got in we got Ta tai chong in he actually scored later uh, was actually was actually I think the second is ranked like second in the goal of the month I think then we're getting Cole Woodrow who had an assist and uh, Carlton Morris also came in and had a goal so very good subs there uh, getting two goals in in a minute so and take a look at the goals we scored like Carlton Morris came on in the 75th scored one minute later here Sambi with the ball finds Morris there very clinical finishing and then we had uh, the beautiful goal by Chong gets the ball here finds Woodrow will find Chong again and he just smacks that up and top bins as they say top bins made this a 2-2 ball game i'm really happy about this like wolves away in one point i definitely take that i mean it's our our subs that kind of made a difference here is he like 7.8 on shong woodrow 7.2 carlton mori 7.3 and panzer and dries burke okay as well so yeah we really got got good good cash out on our on our subs in this game <laughs> it was time <coughs> arsenal at home they started the scoring early i mean you can kind of take a look at the stats here i mean they didn't screw us over totally but you know they're arsenal so we didn't really have a chance in this game martinelli scored early and then we actually got the equalizer uh, had one one into half time but we all knew this wasn't gonna stand for long <laughs> and it fucking didn't but you can take a look at the one one goal here brown advances the sideline whips it in other buyers like three three defenders around him doesn't really matter he heads that home anyway it's the big man 
big man, 190 centimeters. And like jumping reach on 16 and the 15 in strength, so. But it's all downhill from there. Well, from the second half, <laughs> the beginning of the second half until the end, pretty much, because right after half time, Gabriel Jesus scored. And then not long after that, like 15 minutes later, he scored his second goal. Then Saka made it 4-1. And then Martinelli, five minutes later, made it 5-1. And, uh, well, we got a consolation goal at the, at the dying minutes of this game by Ogbene. So at least we scored two goals. Can be happy about that. So Nakamba with the ball here finds Woodrow to Ogbene. It's a nice goal, actually. It's a nice clinical finish by Ogbene. Well, not much to say about this game. It's obviously a loss. And it's always going to be a loss. And then a tough away game against West Ham, which... Yeah, we kind of put down the 3-4-1, the I guess. Uh, and try to... Well, try to kind of stop their pace and go for nil-nil, I guess. Uh, can just waste time as much as we can and just annoy the hell out of them. It worked for an hour until Ophidori actually put the ball on the net, which kind of fucked us. Because... Yeah, Ward Prowse did score in the 94th minute, but yeah, we didn't. I mean, after after how we play this game was like, yeah, this is very destructive. It's not very creative at all. And then conceding a goal, and we need to be creative. It's not like flip the switch like that. Is it? so. Uh, West Ham is a good side as well. This is really not one of those games, in my opinion, that we're going to win this season. Well, it's not one of the most important games to win. I mean, a well-established side, West Ham, a good, a good team. Like, you can take a look at their, their starting lineup here, like Alfonso Ariola. We have Zuma, Vavro Mavropanos. Mavropanos. <laughs> Aguered, well, Cresswell is probably not one of their better players anymore, but Edson Alvarez, Ward Prowse's DMs, uh, you have like a three offensive players there, like Jared Bowen, Mohamed Kudus, and Said Ben Rama, and then Mika Mikael Antonio. Uh, compared to what we have, yeah, you can see we didn't really too much this game uh, I mean try to get some subs in and see what we could do we couldn't do anything Cabaret was out injured as well this game so played Dory is not really that's not really his position so yeah West Ham away a little bit too tough there but can I get some Moral back uh, playing Norwich in uh, the EFL third round after this. Uh, a game we won 3 1, 3 2, even. It was a pretty bad first half from us. Didn't really get any chances, any play going really in this first half. Um, they scored very early and had that 1-0 going into halftime. So we tried to do some changes. We didn't do any subs in halftime, but like team talk and try to, try to change change th some things uh, or the mentality of our players more than anything else, I suppose. It worked. Uh, we got... We got what we <laughs> words we got what we wanted out of those um 
out of that same talk where you got Adebayo to actually score right after halftime. Sambi Lokonga then scored uh, two minutes later. And uh, Lokonga actually scored again nine minutes after that, made this 3-1 before Marcelinho Nunez scored the 61st minute. But we did have... We did have the advantage because they had uh, one um, guy being sent off like in 25th minute mm -hmm. there, so a lot of space to operate in, which um, Sambi Lukonga especially took advantage of in this game. As you can see, he had a really good game, Mr. Sambi. Ogbene did a solid game, Adebayo scored as well, so higher ratings on him. Bell and Cabori got a lot of space out on the wings due to their red card. Or subs then. I mean, we had some late subs, it doesn't didn't really matter for the outcome at all. Giles came on in the 68th, so did them pounds, so didn't really impact the win at all, but can take a look at the goal. So we have the 1-1 one, one goal from Adebayo. Uh, just after halftime. Just a nice steal from Bell there. Finds Adebayo in open space. And a very good finish as well. Then we have Lokonga. A good tackle there from Ogbena. Find Kabore. Some, uh, find Sambi. Lukonga who can get a shot on target, a good shot too. And his second goal came nine minutes later. It's Nakamba who finds Adebayo who found Sambi. Very clinical finishes from him this game. That's a really good shot by the way. Uh, really happy with that, um, that finish from him. And I'm really happy with this game in particular because I think we played well. I mean, we didn't have many clear-cut chances. We had a lot of half chances, a little bit more possession than they did. And yeah, I think it was a solid game from us uh, in terms of what you can expect, I guess. Had an away game at Amex after this, which was a tough game. We went into this game just closing down as much as we could and um, hope for a good counter we actually got a good counter just before half time and it was Adebayo who scored for us Cabaret out on the wing early cross and Adebayo just finds that ball and heads it home after that, it was a lot of like controlling the game, like drag the tempo down, waste as much time as we can, make them really uncomfortable and annoyed with um, with how much of the tempo we are actually dragging down, because they obviously want to play um, a high tempo football. Um. High creativity, high tempo, and we didn't want them to experience that, so... And we did a good job. Um, they did get a goal back, though, by Kaoru Mitoma. But all in all, I think 1-1 one, one against Brighton at uh, Amex Stadium, or whatever it's called, uh, is pretty good. I mean, they haven't been super good this season, in like 13th place, but anyway, they have a lot better players than we do, so... So I definitely take that. Definitely take that. And as you see, like 17 foreign shots. Um, not that... Not that one-sided in possession. Uh, but yeah, we didn't have many chances at all, we like, had that counter and then we didn't have anything after that. We're pretty happy to sit back, but 
even when they scored like one their one one goal uh, i was pretty happy with how we played this game and not like i could do some drastic changes trying to win this game or anything i was very very happy with with a draw here and that's what we got as well then we had liverpool <laughs> Uh, got actually a lot of bookings. Uh, we also got a bio injured. Wasn't a great game from Liverpool. I mean, we tried to to do what we did against. Well, I guess against Brighton. It didn't really get any any type of counter attack on them. I mean, like the team they come with, like Trent, Konate. Van Dijk, Robertson, Endo, Zobuslai, Curtis Jones, Salah, Diaz, Jota. It's just as much as you can do with a team like the one we have, isn't it? But we did, uh, we did do our match plan pretty well. Uh, Lucas Diaz actually scored in 6 9th win. He actually scored in this game in real life too, so... But the real life... Game Luton Liverpool was 1 1, so sadly we didn't get that here. But yeah, but Liverpool is so much better than we are. <laughs> can I be honest and say that? I mean, I'm a Liverpool fan, as you can see on the back wall, so I would definitely say that. But yeah, like comparing players and whatnot, it's not even close, is it? They probably should have scored more about, you know. Not games like these we should win, and definitely not United away. I mean, United is fifth. Yeah. Got Onana injured, so I guess that's good for them. Probably would have won if Onana was in, in goal for the full game. It's a blessing for them having him injured, I guess. So yeah, we were pretty, pretty outplayed here. We actually tried to well we played pretty defensively but not uh, not the five back try to kind of sit a little bit lower with a four two three one i guess didn't really work at all um like it was a midfield battle and obviously they won that they had like fernandez mount and casemiro i mean in terms of like winning winning the battle i don't think they have it's probably only casemiro they can go in and really just nail and win uh, like a midfield battle but when the team is so much better than than us i mean then it makes sense to have fernandez and mount up there it's not like they're gonna win a lot of duels, but they're not gonna need it in a game like this. Yeah, not much to say about this, really. 2-0. Uh, yeah. Uh, we got back on the winning winning track after this, though. Home game against Bournemouth. We actually changed the round a, a bit. We have played at the bio up top a lot. It's a target player. Actually gave Brown the chance to do it from here. Jacob Brown. It's not as much of a target player. We're playing more as a pressing forward. And he did well. He did actually score as well in the 56 minutes of this game. This was a very even game, this. I think we're pretty even sides, to be fair. They probably have... Some higher quality in some places, like on, on Clovert and Sinisterra. Tyler Redham's probably. Um, but all in all, I think it's pretty pretty even game. And especially when we were at home. And actually, Kavinsky was the man of the match. So, 11 10 shots. But we had 8 on target. They just had 2. So, our expected goals was 1.79. They were 0.86. Uh, we actually had two clear cut chances, three half chances. I think we deserve this win. 
we actually own the possession, which is not happening very often this season for us. In terms of uh, player ratings, I mean, Kaminsky was the man of the match. Very solid, um, solid defensive effort from the full back four, which hasn't really been been the thing for us so far. It's been maybe like the wing backs both been decent and there's one one of the central defenders that kind of fell through the cracks but in this game it was pretty pretty even from all of the four the Kamba probably didn't have his best game Barkley actually had a good game here played him more of an advanced playmaker in this game Townsend's first start I think this was um, at 6.5 so he's still getting into to the growth of things we got we got some some subs well, all subs happen after after our goal so we can take a look at Jacob Brown's goal the only goal of the game and the one that clinched our three points so Townsend out to Barkley it's kind of pinballing in the the ball is pinballing in the in the box and uh, ends up at the feet of Jacob Brown who scores and gave us a win and then we have West Ham away again which was in the cup <coughs> not much to say about this one played pretty defensively and tried to kind of made this a uh, status quo game tried to get a nil nil I guess and see what that could have done. Yeah, it went pretty well until Kurt Soma scored in the 87th minute and uh, shot us out of the cup, which isn't too bad. Now we can focus on on the league, which which is good for us because we we barely have the fucking team to compete in the league. Um, we definitely don't have the team to compete in multiple tournaments so yeah I'll I'll, I'll take uh, uh, only focusing on the league is gonna be good for us I think so but yeah it's it's not been terrible I mean it's like a draw against Wolves lost Arsenal West Ham and uh, we had the cup obviously not draw against Brighton away then obviously lo lost uh, to both Liverpool and Man United, which isn't a shock to anyone. And then win against Bournemouth. So we've taken points in the games we shall take points in, I suppose. I mean, away against Wolves, I'll take that definitely. But it's gonna come to a point. Well, it's gonna come to a point in December where we have like three games in a row against teams that right now are in the positions we want to avoid so we have Everton here in 17th we have Sheffield in 18th and Burnley in 20th and all those back to back in, in early December so those gonna be well it's gonna be a really it, it's a week actually like three games in a week so we have saturday tuesday saturday um so yeah but but going into like november which gonna be next episode we have some tough games we have chelsea away we have aston villa who is fucking first in the league for some reason I mean, Splendid season so far. Just lost one game, I think. Then we have Brentford away, which is gonna be tough. Then we have these three games. Then we have City away. Uh, and don't looking forward to that. I'm not looking. Well, Tottenham isn't really playing that well so far. And then we have Fulham. It's also gonna be a, like a, a six point game. <coughs> Excuse me. 
And then we have Liverpool again. So I guess, guess we can take a look at the league here. As I said, Aston Villa is kind of, well, shouldn't say running away with it, but I have like they have nine wins in ten. So they're followed by Liverpool and City, who has one more game than Aston Villa actually have. They are, have played 11 games. Uh, no team in the league that has gone unbeaten. Uh, Burnley has in the other regard. They haven't won a game yet. So, But yeah, we're sitting here in 12th after 10 games. I mean, we're pretty lucky in terms of... Well, lucky. We made our own luck uh, with those four draws. I mean, we lost four games, but the four games we have lost is against United, Liverpool, West Ham and Arsenal, so I can definitely take those. But we're pretty hard to beat. Some very good, like, away draws here with Brighton, Wolves and Newcastle, obviously. And we have the wins against, well, two home wins. So yeah, pretty hard to beat. I mean, the team that have beaten us is a team that should definitely beat us. So, so we'll take that. And if we take a look at most goals, we have Nichols Jackson. He's actually scored a hat-trick Monday against Tottenham. Uh, Holland, obviously. You don't need to talk about this beast of a man, do we? And we have Saka on seven. Where is our first player? He's not, we don't have a player on here at all. <laughs> uh, this is like in the league, so I don't know who is our best best goal scorer league-wise. Stats, competitions, league, goals. Well, the bio scored three, so it should be on there, shouldn't he? Well, he's probably on here, like, tied 19th. With, like, Leon Bailey and Mikel Antonio and all those guys. But anyway, in terms of average rating, we have Garnacho. Man United. On... Um, 7.62 for 5 apps and 3 uh, subs then we have Cole Palmer who's done a good season well at start of the season in real life too even though the Chelsea have struggled it's a good signing for Chelsea Cole Palmer then Odegaard good rating as well man of the match most times it's probably Matthias Jensen or Brentford with four four times. Same for Salah. Uh, if we go on assist, we have Kevin De Bruyne. I don't think we have anyone on here. Uh, two is our best, so no, we don't have anyone on here. Kevin De Bruyne with Seven assists. We have Mar Gabriel Martinelli, Odegaard on six. We have Ward Prowse on five, together with Hugmin Zon. And then we have a lot of people on four. We have a Swede here. We have Dejan Kulusevski. In terms of player of the match, yeah, Matthias Jensen and Mo Salah with the four. Clean sheets, we have Ederson with seven. We have Ramsdale with five. We have Flecken in Brentford with five. Allison with five. Uh, we should have... 
No, you here, here he is. Tied seventh, Thomas Kaminski with three clean sheets. Ten games. Not bad, not bad. And then we have yellow cards. Holly McBurn in Sheffield United has taken four already. Then June Wayne Everton as well. Distance covered. We're trading headers one. Possession one. Possession lost. Anything else we wanna wanna check? We can check for well, player overview. I guess we checked most of this. If we go team overview or team detail, team overview. Most goals Arsenal with 27, most points per game Aston Villa 2.70, most shots Man City, fewest shots against Man City, best pass completion 91% Man City, most possession Chelsea, tackles won Tottenham, dribbles made Tottenham, clean sheets City with 7, fewest concede Newcastle with 7. Um, games without winning, Burnley with uh, 10. Games without conceding, 1. We have average attendance. We're going to be dead last here. Yeah, 96% of cap, but it's 11,000, so... You know. Yeah, Man United have like 72,000, so... It's pretty pretty sold out. Sheffield United have the least sell sell out, I suppose. Ninety two percent and Bramall Lane. It's Bramall Lane, right? Sheffield United's arena, yeah. Stadium. Brighton actually hundred percent. Fulham hundred percent. Not Brighton, Fulham, Crystal Palace hundred percent. Brentford hundred percent as well. A lot of 100% teams actually, in terms of cap. Net transfer spend here is going to be interesting. We're actually not last. I mean, Sheffield spend less than us. Burnley and Brighton actually made money. Well, Brighton made money because they fucking sold Caicedo. That's... Why? <laughs> we take a look at our our stats here. We can check overall. Most goals are the bio with four. Most assists, as we said earlier, is Woodrow and Isa Cabor. And two. Expected goals are the bio two point three. Scored four. Player of the match, we have four players who has gotten it once. Best pass rating, Tom Lockyer. Most tackles per game, Amari Bell. Like four tackles, dribbles per game, Ogbene. Shot percentage. Jellos, we have quite a few jellos, no red cards yet, luckily enough. Average rating. Jacob Brown. He's been good when we played him up front, actually. So we might play him up there more frequently going forward. Because he did score in his latest outings here, latest outing here. And they did spend like 4 million on him, so from Stoke. <coughs> so we might give him some, some more playing time. Might be a good shout. Uh... I can take a look at our tactics. This is our defensive 4 2 3 1. Well, it's more 4 2 1 2 1, I guess. It's our park the bus tactics. It's just close down everything. And uh, game we games we want to control mainly at home. This is our, our um, tactics for that. This is 4-3-3. So those are the three kind of tactics we have elaborated or played around with, I suppose. If we take a look. 
get medical center current injuries Dan Potts and Jordan Clark on the way back both of them which is good schedule um, knocked out in the Carabao Cup the FA Cup will go in, in the third round which is early January so we'll see what we get there and avoid relegation is the board expectation which we are pretty pretty good at right now but then again uh, we're 12 we're safe but it's like four four points down to the relegation zones you know so yeah tom lockyer is our, our captain our key player albert sambilokonga and a loan from Arsenal. Hot prospect Ted Mengi. He's he's out on loan though to to, <coughs> to Black Pole. Get some good playing time there. Club Vision. They want to build a new new stadium, which which wouldn't be half bad. <laughs> Five year plan is well, this season remain in the Premier League. Want to be self sustainable in 27 28. Well, keep on remaining in the Premier League. Here's not much work towards becoming self sustainable. Finances looking overall balance at 10 million euros at a minute. Development center under 21s and some potentials out on loan, I suppose. Joe Johnson, Jaden Luker, Ted and Mengi, Matthew Lewis, Slag Nelson, Joe Taylor. So if we take a look at the big talents, I suppose he's 17 years old. Joe Johnson, left defender, is in Altrin Tram now in the National League. Uh, Jaden Luker is in Northampton Town in League One. Marcus Dawes. North Irishman Miller Matthews Lewis is in Torquay United in National League South. It's actually scored four goals for them. So yeah, we have some some interesting um, young uh, young bucks here that can came up and do do something. But yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it for this episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as I said, I haven't really recorded anything because I've been sick for a week. Uh, well, I got sick like mid, well, last week. I think I kind of picked something up at, at Wednesday and then when weekend came, I was floored. <laughs> so... I could barely like speak because every time I fucking try to speak or swallow something I kind of felt like I had fucking razor blades inside my throat so that was not very pleasant but we're getting better um, still the voice is still a bit iffy I still cough a little bit but it's a lot better now than it was so I thought we, we made a we will make an um, episode here. So hopefully we can get another one out uh, during the weekend or something like that. But for now I'll bid you all adieu. And thank you for watching this episode. And I hope you enjoyed the journey. I'm um, ripping my non-existent hair. Uh, for every game this season. I would say I've already ripped my hair out but... I lost all my hair 
prior to starting this save, so you know. So I can say I even ripped my beard away because I did shave, so or ripped it off in games, whatever you believe in. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it here, and hopefully we'll get a, like a November December kind of update uh, during the weekend. And yeah, thank you for watching. Have a good night or day, whatever time you watch this. Um, take care. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Toodles.